Listen. 2017 was the best year for conservatives in the 30 years that I've been here. The best year mm -hmm. on all fronts. And a lot of people are shocked because we didn't know what we were getting with Donald Trump. He was doing fundraisers for show three or four years ago. But this has turned out to be a very uh, solid, conservative, right of center, pro-business administration. And we're seeing the results of it with all of the companies, with the bonuses and uh, pay raises and investments. And then you have some on the left, for example, Nancy Pelosi has called the $1,000 bonuses crumbs. It was an incredible miscalculation. They thought the tax bill would be for us what Obamacare was for them politically. Totally different subject. Why do you think they got that so wrong? Well, Democrats don't like cutting taxes. They don't like tax reform. And that vote where not a single Democrat in the House or the Senate voted for this tax reform bill tells you all you need to know about the Democrats. They trust the government. Had the Democrats participated in this tax bill, it would have been totally different. Mm -hmm. This is the most pro-growth tax reform ever. Do you think that those Democrats in, will regret it? Um, I think they already regret it because you mentioned uh, Leader Pelosi's strained comments about crumbs. What a bizarre observation, because to a lot of middle class people, uh, it's, it's a significant amount of money that they're going to begin to see in their paychecks beginning in, in the middle of February. In terms of the legislative calendar going forward, conventional wisdom is that the two big issues that could have a big chance of passing this year are immigration and infrastructure. Is that how you see it? Yeah, we now have a 51-49 majority, very close. Uh, we're going to have to make some progress for the American people and do it on a bipartisan basis. And on infrastructure, I think that's a subject that appeals to both sides. I think we've got a good chance to make progress there. Some of the Democrats question if you are a man of your word when it comes to uh, this vote that is supposed to be held for the Dreamers. Um, is that vote going to happen? Well, here, here's what I said. If, if the agreement doesn't come together, and be a part of this other negotiation we've had going on over how much we're going to spend this year and next year, um, supplemental relief for Florida and Texas and Puerto Rico. There's a sort of a collection of issues we've been talking. That this, if, if the president and the Democrats reach an agreement, it can go into that. Or if it doesn't, as long as the government is still open, no more shutdowns. That didn't work for them last week. Um, I'll bring the subject up on the floor and treat both sides in a fair way and we'll have a debate and see who can get to 60 votes. Do you think that in some ways when it comes to like the infrastructure bill, the Democrats could be split and that could help you get to 60? Well, the same on immigration. I think there are some Democrats who will not want to cooperate at all on anything Donald Trump is for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that may be true on infrastructure. Uh, you know, they showed their divisions the weekend of the government shutdown. Well, I think that has revealed a group of reasonable Democrats who want to work together and to make progress for the American people in 2018 in this 51-49 Senate. We're going to have to work together, and I think we can do that. Uh, the tw was it 2013 that the shutdown um, was over Obamacare? And didn't work for us, did it? No, it's almost a mirror image. <laughs> yeah, they adopted a tactic that we had tried on several occasions, and it never worked for us, us being Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, they decided to try it themselves, and it didn't work for them. I think it's clear the American people do not like shutting down the government, period, no matter who does it. Do you think there will be another CR, or that we'll be able to pass the budget? Well, we're still trying to figure out the way to fund the government in a more comprehensive way than passing continuing resolutions, and I hope... In the aisle, to say the least. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is feeling pretty confident about the GOP's chances for holding on to the Senate Majority. Look, listen. Well, we, we do have a pretty good map. 25 Democrats are up in 18 and only 10 Republicans. Um, of course, the Democrats had a good map last year, <laughs> and uh, we're optimistic we can keep the majority. And keeping the majority lies in places like Arizona and Nevada and Missouri and North Dakota and Indiana and West Virginia. And we hope to be competitive in Florida as well. All of those will be battleground states uh, if we, you know, hold Arizona and Nevada and pick up some of these others. We'll have a 
a majority for two more years. Do you think you almost have a candidate in North Dakota to run? Yeah, we're going to have a candidate. That's a very winnable race. I told you about sports, and my friends wanted me to ask, should they put Louisville in the top four of their bracket in a month? Probably not, regretfully. Anything they can do to turn it around? <laughs> They're having a decent year. Top. Confirmed to the U.S. Circuit Courts. Well, the courts of appeals are where most cases end up. That's usually the final word. Only a tiny fraction make it all the way to the Supreme Court. So the circuit courts are em enormously important. My job in this, Dana, since I control the schedule, is to bring them up. I, you know, I have to pick what am I going to do this week. And what I have done is to prioritize these circuit court judges because I think it's the, it's the, the, the most significant kind of long-term impact you can have on the country far beyond any president, uh, these people have a lifetime tenure. In 2013, that you warned Harry Reid about the dangers of changing the rules of the Senate. You said breaking the rules to change the rules would fundamentally change the Senate. Future majorities would be looking to this precedent. I don't know what the future holds, but two years from now, I could be setting the agenda around here. And once deployed, the nuclear option may have fallout in future Congresses. There's a lot of pressure that comes sometimes from the president and sometimes even from, uh, from the right to ask you to uh, change the rules for other things like appropriation bills in order to try to avoid things like the shutdown that you went through two weeks ago. But you've withstood that. Why do you, why do you think that that is the wrong thing to do? What's unique about the Senate is that it requires a supermajority to do most things. There are a couple of exceptions, and we use some of those exceptions on the tax bill. Having been in the minority a lot around here, I can give you a long list of really bad things that have been stopped because the majority couldn't get 60. Socialized medicine, for example. Getting rid of state right-to-work laws. On and on and on. Because Democrats have had significant periods where they had really big majorities and this would be a very different country and it would be a different country to the left so my what i say to conservatives is don't be so impatient you know you never know when the shoe will be on the other foot the white house basically says obamacare is dead do you think that we can actually say obamacare doesn't need to be addressed legislatively any longer well let's put it this way it's got a gaping hole in it we, we've repealed the individual mandate in the tax bill uh, the administration is moving administratively. We still think Obamacare was a huge mistake for the country. We didn't have the votes, regretfully, to repeal and replace it. But we're still trying to move it in a more competitive direction. What would you say to people who are you know, concerned that America is so divided today? You take a long view of things, and you've been around a while. Are things better than people think? Yeah, let me make everybody feel better. <clears throat> Anything you may have heard any of the politicians say about each other today pale in comparison to what Thomas Jefferson and, Tom and John Adams said about each other. And we have met a single incident where a congressman from South Carolina came over and almost beat to death on the Senate floor, a senator from Massachusetts. My point, America has always been involved in a very animated, robust political discussion. What is different today is instant communication. You know, you see it and hear it constantly. And so you're more alarmed than you should be. We've had raucous debates. We've had a civil war, for goodness sake. I think everybody ought to relax. What you're seeing is a great American political debate like we've had for over 230 years. It continues, it's just that more people hear about it. 